talking with Jim Chanos of Kinecos Associates. So, Jim, we were talking about China. Right. And you and I actually talked before we all started about how nobody really looks at the Chinese government balance sheet in terms of the amount of debt that they have. Talk to us a little bit about that. Well, the Chinese government balance sheet directly does not have a lot of debt. It's de minimis. But the fact of the matter is the state-owned enterprises and the local governments mm -hmm. and all the other ancillary borrowing vehicles um, have lots of debt. And it's growing at a very, very fast rate. And the assumption is, is the state stands behind all this debt. Well, if we look at it on that basis, and, and Fitch and others have done so too, we see that, that debt in China, implicitly backed by uh, the, the Chinese government, probably has gone from somewhere about 100 percent of GDP to about 200 percent of GDP recently. Mm -hmm. And those are numbers that are, are, are staggering. Those are European kind of numbers, if not worse. So what happens? I mean, how do you see it playing out? You, you talk a lot about a Chinese property bubble. Right. If they, the debt load becomes unmanageable, I mean, what happens to China? I think we all think of it as being so strong financially and fiscally, and yet numbers show well, a different story. Well, I just think that's going to be the surprise going into the end of this year and into 2012 that it's not so strong. End of this year. Yeah. I mean, I think, as I said, the property market is hitting the wall right now, um, and, and things are decelerating. Um, the CEO of Komatsu said just last week that he's having trouble getting paid for his excavator sales in China. Mm -hmm. um, so developers are being squeezed. They're turning to the black market for lending, this sort of shadow banking system, which is now growing by leaps and bounds, like everything in China, sort of starts at nothing and suddenly <laughs> is huge within a year or two. And regulators over there are really trying to get their hands around the problem. Meantime, the local governments have every incentive to just keep the game going. So they're just continuing with these projects, continuing to borrow as the central government tries to rein them in. Now, you've been short Chinese banks. Mm -hmm. And you continue that? We're short Chinese banks, the property developers, commodity companies that sell into China. Anything related to property there is, is still a short. Anything you like in China? Um, yeah, we're long the uh, Macau casinos. It's, it's our long corruption short property play. All right, interesting. And you've had that for a while, though. We have. I mean, again, we feel that, that A, that there's American management, there's American accounting, um, there's subsidiaries of American companies, and they're growing at, at a faster rate even than the property developers. Hey, you know, one thing we talked about, we've been talking about the IMF lowering the growth estimates for the world at this yeah. point. They did lower it for, for China as well, but it's still about 9.5%. Right. But is it a trend that you think is going to continue? We're going to continue to see those growth rates brought in uh, on China, and it will indicate some of the worries that you've been pointing out? Well, look at it this way. I mean, a lot of people are assuming now that half of all new loans in China are going to go bad. In fact, the Chinese government even said that last year relating to the local governments. If we assume that, that, that China is going to grow total credit this year between 30 and 40 percent of GDP, and half of that debt is going to go bad. Yeah, how can it be good? That's 15 to 20 percent. And say the recoveries on that are 50 percent. Mm. That means that's seven and a half to ten percent, Carol. That means that China, on an after write-off basis, may not be growing at all. It right. may be just simply having to write off some of this stuff down in the future. So its nine percent growth may really be zero.